Hey everyone, welcome to the fifth video, and probably the last video, in my Excel and graphing series. This one is a bit of an optional one, and it has to do with linearization. It's optional because uh, it's not often required by most science labs. Uh, you can usually get away with just a good graph, whether that graph is curved or a straight line linear graph. However, in, um, in the courses that I'm teaching in IB Physics, IB Physics pretty much requires that for, to get a good result on a lab, to get a good uh, mark on a lab report. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to do linearization. Uh, there are two ways that this can work. In the first way, you actually know what your formula is. Let's try an example here. Uh, let's say I'm doing a lab that involves the force. Uh, this involves the force between uh, two objects due to gravity. Uh, so this big G, M1, M2, all over R squared. So I know my formula. I know what sort of relationship I should see between my variables. Now we're going to say that in this one we're chest testing the force and R squared. So G and M1 and M2 are constants. Now what we need to do here is figure out how to get a linear relationship between F and R. What we can do with this is we should separate out our constants. The linear expression is y equals mx plus b. For here we don't have a plus b, but we need to know what our constant term, our m term, is going to be. So I'm going to separate out all the constants. g is a constant, m1 is a constant, m2 is a constant, and what's left over is 1 over r squared. I've already got, right now, my linearized formula. Draw some boxes around here. This is our y value. This g times m1 times m2 is my m value. It would be the slope of a linear equation or a linear graph. And this, 1 over r squared, is basically my x value. So I would graph. 1 over r squared versus force. The graph would look like this. Force as my y value, and 1 over r squared as my x value. And that should give me a nice, straight line. And the slope of that line would be big G, gravitational constant, m1, m2. So this should give me the gravitational constant, universal gravitational constant, times the mass of the two objects. There is another thing we can do with this. One of the problems with this version is that uh, when you do 1 over r, well, I've seen this happen with things like 1 over r, 1 over r squared. Uh, sometimes you get this, the points clumped in one area. The points are closer together here than they are up here. So another way we can do that to make sure that the points are evenly spaced, because we're likely going to evenly space our R values, we can manipulate, we can solve for R. So let's see, we would have to flip everything and then uh, take the square root, I think. Yeah, yeah so let's try that now. So well, let's start, we'll start by flipping everything. 1 over F uh, equals 1 over G m1, m2, r squared. Yeah, I need to square root that. So square root, and square root, and then there. So now, again, in this case, this is going to be my y value. This is my m value. And this is my x value. So I could graph instead root of 1 over f versus r. 
This should again also give me, and it'll also give me a straight line. And the slope will equal root 1 over g m1 m2. Yep. And that is how we can linearize with a known with a known formula, a known equation. Okay, so what happens if you have some data but you don't know the relationship between them? You don't know what law you'd expect. Or what happens if you try to linearize and you don't get a good straight line? What you have to do is try to figure out the relationship in the data by using the power curve. So I have some data here. This is some uh, data from a uh, source at MIT. Um, it's not linear, I can tell that, but I don't know what relationship it has. So what I need to do is start by making a scatter plot. Right there, there's a good scatter plot, and I'm going to move it to a new page. So we can see, we can see it's definitely not linear. We click on it and add a trend line. And that trend line's type is not going to be linear, it's going to be the power type. As always, we add our equation, display on the chart, and our R-squared value to check how good our fit is. And let's drag this over here. Okay, so this is the equation we're looking at. Uh, our R-squared value is pretty good, 0.994, looks good. The equation, what we want to look at is the exponent. The exponent up there will tell us what kind of relationship we have. Uh, I see negative 1.818. Now, I'd say that's about negative 2. An exponent of negative 2, the negative means it's an inverse relationship, a 1 over x, or 1 over x squared, or 1 over x to the third, or 1 over x to the whatever. And the 2, the fact is negative 2, means it's, I know it's 1 over x squared. It's an inverse square relationship. We see these fairly often. Gravity is an example of inverse square. So that's pretty good right now. That tells me that I want to see a relationship of y, or in this one, power, is proportional to 1 over x squared. So now, with proportionality, proportionality works kind of like an equation, except in an equation you'd have an equal sign and you'd have a constant. So since I know that it's, um, that force is, or power is proportional to 1 over distance squared, I could manipulate that proportionality as though it was an equation. And I could turn it into, the same way I did with the equation, I could turn it into um, root one over power is proportional to the distance. So that's what I'm gonna work with right now. Let me go back to my sheet, back to my data, and I'm gonna copy out some of that data. Let's see, that, by using a formula, right over there, Copy this down, that's good too. All right, now, I want my distances to be the same. The benefit here is that I know that all my points will be evenly spaced. I could do this the other way, where I change my distances by um, squaring, by doing one over distance squared, but I don't wanna do that. Actually, this should be root square, skew RT for square root, one over power. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the square root, SQRT is a function that lets me take the square root of something. There are many functions in Excel. It's up to you to figure out. Uh, you'll need to check the help function to see what they do, but they do many, you know, pretty powerful bits of uh, mathematics. Uh, I want to have square root of 1 over p. 1 over, I want the power over here. It's in b2. Close the brackets, hit enter. There's our 1 over power. So this is the square root of 1 over 400. Now I need to fill that down. There we go. There's our data. This should be more linearized. But let's see. Make a scatter plot. Oh, that looks pretty good. Move this to a new chart page, and there's our data, looks fairly linear. Let's see what the trend line has to say about it. 
So our linear by default, display r squared and display the equation, and that is quite linear. r squared is 0.995, thereabouts. We have a good equation. And this b value, the, uh, this, the, the constant here at the end, that should actually be very close to zero. And that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty close to zero. So that means we don't need to worry about that part. and We can just work, focus on the slope and x. So what this tells me is uh, root of 1 over power is equal to 0 0.0212 times the distance. Now I can manipulate that equation later, but the important part is I now have an equation. So that's the power of linearization. We just got an equation to relate our two variables. Um, you can adjust that equation to get a good constant. Uh, if you are working with known values, things like acceleration due to gravity, that's always a popular one for labs. From this slope, you should be able, and doing some mathematics to it, you should be able to get the equation. This, by the way, is exactly what you would do as well if you already know the linearization. The difference is you know how you need to manipulate your variables in the, uh, in the charts. You don't need to do a uh, power curve to test it. Right, I think that's basically it. So thanks for watching. Bye.